internet how are we doing tonight how are you guys doing how are you doing well <laughs> all right here we are back for another season of challenge accepted Ooh, so excited um real quick got a couple of quick housekeeping things gonna take care of first so first thing a big shout out to sirenscape uh, check out Sirenscape for uh, your for background music that you can use for your tabletop gaming, whether it's Cyberpunk, D&D, or everything in between. Um, also, a sh uh, shout out to the community. We had a really good show this morning with a lot, with a, and hopefully continue to have a really good show tonight. Um, and I want to do a plug and a shout out for Patreon. Uh, if you go to Suguba Studio. Or go to patreon.com slash scuba studio and join uh, join and support the studio via Patreon. You get exclusive access and early access to content and conversations that are going on. Um, it's also a great way to help and support the studio as we're branching out into more YouTube stuff as well as uh, what we're doing here on Twitch. Continue to sort of support on Twitch is perfectly fine. Please uh, continue to do so if you feel comfortable doing that. Uh, links in the doobly-doo down below. Um... Scuba and the Rye on Tuesday. Uh, we're going to continue uh, work doing what we do for that show tomorrow morning for Sunday with Scoob. Going to do a miniature. I just got a miniature in the mail and I don't know where it went, but it is a Merolith, an undead Merolith. So I will be painting that on stream in the morning. Um, if you like what you're seeing here and you're new to the channel, please click the follow. Uh, also, go check us out on YouTube. Uh, we're gonna we have a bunch of videos that are up there i will say that if you haven't subscribed to the youtube yet please subscribe to the youtube because next week i have a major content release of a bunch of videos that had happened uh previously to get us all caught up and current um yeah uh, those those are those things um got a new marketplace uh for teespring for various t-shirts masks and whatnot with the scoot with the studio logo and artwork uh, if you want to go check that out, links uh, here on the panels down below. And uh, this is our World Kofin. If you want to learn more about Kofin, go check it out on World Anvil. Should be a, a link in the in the uh, in the panels as well. And with that, I think that's everything. Yep. Uh, shout out and a thank you to the moderators in the chat. You guys are awesome. Thank you for helping out and, and doing all those wonderful things you do. And of course, a thank you to the cast who wants to come back. And play some more D and D. Hey. <laughs> okay. Ryan. Excited. <laughs> so how are you, how has everyone been doing? You had a good holiday break? Yeah, not too bad. It was uh, nice to see the end of 2020 and the beginning oh, of 2021. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> we're excited to see what this new year brings. Hopefully it brings a lot of cool things and a lot of great things and not a lot of what we had last year. But again, we will see what happens. <laughs> yeah, that's some nature doesn't double down on us. So uh, obviously we have some returning cast, Pearl, Titus, and Maze from previous season. And we have a return and returning from the first season, we have Carol Lee. And new join new member of the party who's joining us tonight will be Nin. Hey. I'm excited so about we this. Will, uh, Work on all the introductions and whatnot as we go through the game. Um, any uh, any questions or thoughts or whatnot before we dive right in, or we're we just ready to dive in and see? I brought my snorkel. You brought your snorkel. <laughs> <laughs> and my my swim pants. Uh, yeah, shoot me a message, man. Let's talk. And I know you talked about wanting to do this. I hadn't seen a message. For you. All righty. So, where we were previously, uh, Carolee, since you're the, it's been the longest for you. Previously with Carolee, it was uh, you and the, you and your uh, the group you were with had been had gone to the city to the vill to the town of Saltmarsh, and got and w was sent to investigate a haunted house. Um, shenanigans, fire, grease, all these things, and uh, come to find out that the house was actually a front for a smuggler ring. 
you manage to break up that smuggler ring and get the uh, smuggler ship over to the town of Saltmarsh. And then you guys had all kind of dispersed uh, into the winds, which has, uh, in that time, it has brought you, uh, it has been roughly six months since that occurred. What has Carolee been doing in that six month time? Well, mostly she's been investigating uh, different things, you know, to try to figure out more about the smuggling ring. Uh, she is pretty uh, insistent about it. And so she began to investigate it more uh, and look into it a lot, kind of took her up and down the Sword Coast a little bit. Um, she, through her investigations, became a little bit more observant. That was the feed I took. So feed. <laughs> Some training observing. and observation. That's always yeah. a good one. Yeah, and uh, just kind of looking into the like what was even happening. With, so with what was going on with Salt Marsh? Um, kind of wrote some of those down in my background just to kind of like you know, refresh myself a little bit. But uh, uh, she insists to everybody who asked that she was totally justified in burning down that haunted house. Uh, it was spider infested, and she'll take that to her grave. <laughs> and. Uh, um, and uh but uh so that's kind of what she did and and she kind of took her to this uh where we are right now and trying to figure out the, the group kind of split up and she said she was going to stay and, and and see what was going on here and continue to try to right some of the wrongs of the people in the area and she it's really big for her to take care of the downtrodden and, and uh that's why she decided to continue in this area and uh, keep looking for other uh, corruption in other towns and other things that were going on and uh see where it goes well your travels had taken you to the town of squall's end a small little uh little town uh along the coast uh real co close to the along the coast there's a small like small port that sometimes uh merchant ships and sailing ships will will stop at every so often to offload it's not a major hub it's kind of a still it's kind of a, a minor uh frontier kind of kind of town it was like it's got a group of people there and they're trying to kind of build up it's got like one street it's got a, a blacksmith it's got some basic stuff um next up um we have uh per uh next we'll go with pearl what has pearl been doing for her six month period well the main thing is is looking for her sister uh because that was what she had set out to do in the first place and and, and, and so she's been looking all over for her. Um, and then also she's gotten tired of people trying to grab her and kidnap her and tie her up and things like that. So she's been practicing uh, not being able to be grabbed easy, as easily and being able to go faster. So now she's much more mobile. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she really didn't like that beetle that was put on her. That, that, that's what really pushed her over the edge of that one. That's fair. That's fair. Um, and in that time, unfortunately, you weren't able to find a way back to Barovia. Uh, we can talk a little bit more about your investigation, but you're, yep. but you were actually brought to Squall's End to uh, because you heard a rumor that there was a, a caravan of Vistani in the area. Ah. So this happens to be one of the nearby settlements that you wanted to come and check out. Yeah, See definitely. What's going on? Titus, really, how about what what have you been doing since you guys you Maze and Pearl were dropped off uh, along the Sword Coast by the Emerald Lady in her house? So uh, I have been taking some time to relax, uh, not feel so pulled uh, to one direction or the other for fear of party members running away, uh, and. Uh, just enjoying the time uh i was able to rummage through all of the belongings that have been left to me from jonathan the paladin mentor uh from barovia and uh found some parchments and scrolls and texts uh pertaining to uh the path or the oath of the ancients and spent some time focusing on that and learning a little bit more about that history and that mindset and uh, taking on that as my own and uh, also practicing some in in uh, in sword fighting 
Whoa. Cool. Um, Pearl, did you keep in con? Did you try to keep in contact with Titus and Maze? Well, yeah, because uh, I, right off the bat, when I was going to try and go into uh, Barovia, first thing I did was talk to Titus because he used to live there and stuff. So yes, I would have tried to keep in contact with them and try to figure out, you know, tell them, hey, I'm still not able to get in there and, and, and stuff like that. Um, have you happened to see any Vastani while you've been wandering around? That sort of stuff. Okay. Um, so that that's good. That kind of leads into uh, Titus coming to Squall's End as well uh, to kind of follow up on this lead for possible for a possible Vistani. Uh, Maze, how have how have you been doing, and what have you done in this six month time frame? Well, Maze has been a little lost since she's never left the city before, and everything being so different and new, she's just kind of been wandering around trying to figure out what to do in life now, and ended up coming upon a warlock that has been teaching her a couple of things over the past few months and oh because that'll never go bad yeah you know and what, so, yeah. what would the name of the warlock be would it be a would it be a certain trickster god that we we know in another universe maybe hmm. <laughs> guess we'll see and so yeah that's that's been nice for the past couple of months and here she is now I guess wanting to feel a little closer to home and seeking out Titus and Pearl all right well this has uh, brought you to Squall's End as well uh, for being someone who's used to seeing the hustle and bustle of Paradon this place is quite quaint and quiet and small really small like you see through the town on uh, uh, depending on which alley which uh which way which way you look from one end to the other so it's a nice and quiet little place lastly and uh lastly we'll come up on nin as the newest uh newest member in our world what has nin's life been like well i'm uh i'm uh I'm very nervous about what I'm, where I am. I don't know who I am or where I am or what I am. I'm trying to figure this out. I've been on the road for God knows at least six months to a year. And some time with a circus, I believe. Yes, I just hooked up with a traveling circus now, giving me some kind of stability. But I don't know what they, what they think of me or if my my weird things, powers that had that come out of me are going to freak them out like they did all the other um, rural people that I've run into. But um, I'm hoping that uh, with all the other side shows, I won't seem like such a weirdo or such a freak. All right, so real quick, let's uh, do a description of the characters for those who are un uh, uh, unsure. Let's start with, uh, we'll go in reverse order. Let's start with Nin. What does Nin look like? Nin is a uh, half elf. Um, he looks like he's about 16 with the size of his body and his, his limbs and everything being kind of shriveled and degraded a little bit. So if you look at his face, he looks more like he's 30, but he's actually about 19. Um, and uh, he, uh, he's quite um, dirty and tattered um, and always for some reason has all the surfaces of his body covered so he wears gloves, he's got a big uh, uh, scarf and shawl hood on top of him and his legs are all covered with uh, um, uh, trousers but they're kind of bandaged and his boots are bandaged up, everything trying to hold together, and and uh, his eyes are kind of weird. They uh, they sometimes flash to black, to yellow green. Uh, it just depends kind of what's happening. Mace, uh, what's uh, what, can you do a quick description on what uh, what your character looks like? Sure. She is a three foot tall halfling, 
and she's always wearing her blue and green trench coat. Uh, she has a long sandy brown ponytail and green eyes. Uh, she has a rapier and a, on her side and a short bow on her back, and she has a pet mouse named Fritz, and he's always with her. He's black with little red eyes, and he's usually riding on her shoulder or sleeping in her pocket. I missed Fritz. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Titus, uh, can you describe what you look like? So Titus is a, um, a human paladin. Uh, he is uh, covered in traditional uh, paladin armor. Um, on top of his armor is draped a, a green cloth that just kind of runs down the front uh, and the back of, of, his, of his body. Uh, the color of green is likened to like fresh grass or uh, a, a uh, rainforest kind of color. Uh, his shield is, um, is rather ornate, much more so than it was uh, previously for those that had traveled with him in Peridon and Barovia. Uh, it now has what looks like a tree growing up through a center with branches, uh, with green uh, leafy uh, colorations on it, the sun shining through behind it uh, against a, a blue sky. Uh, all of this uh, would be likened to the, uh, the nature side of the Order of the Ancients uh, for preserving life. Uh, but he is uh, about six foot tall, uh, bearded, uh, kind of a brownish, uh, reddish beard, and uh, uh, yeah. Alrighty. And Pearl? What does Pearl look like? She is a cream colored, uh, lion face style uh, a tabaxi. Uh, very happy, very go lucky. Uh, has a little owl that shows up every so often. Uh, uh, and, and can cause mischief every so often. Um, and uh, she is dressed out in a monk garb, uh, but is, is a kimono. Um, she looks, uh, wears it most of the time. Every so often she'll wear a dress that has lots of ribbons on it, but for the most part, she usually wears her, her kimono. And uh, she has uh, bright red hair as well. Uh, because that's kind of like a mane that's pulled down into a braid. Cream color tabaxi with bright red hair. Mm-hmm. Like Alrighty. red, you know, natural red, but yes, red. Oh, obviously, dye every so often, you know, that kind of thing. I get it. I totally get it. <laughs> and Carolee, what, is, what, what does Carolee look like? She, she's a petite halfling female, uh, but slightly taller than Maze, and she makes sure she let Maze know that. Uh, anyway, so she's one inch taller. Uh, she's just over three feet. Okay. Uh, she's tan-skinned. Uh, you know, definitely spent a lot of time in the sun, outdoors, travels all the time. Uh, she would be considered pretty, but uh, there's an obvious, obvious and very horrible burn scar running down her right uh, neck and cheek area. Uh, some kind of a terrible burn that mars her face. Uh, in fact, uh, she actually now is wears a white, almost a, kind of a mask over it, one of those half masks over it. It's, it's part of it is definitely as part of her, you know, mark of healing that from the house of healing that she's from. Just started using that recently, but she definitely keeps it covered up. Um, and uh, it mars, like I said, what would have been probably a pretty face. Uh, she tends to keep the right side of her face covered though, and uh, away from everybody. So because of this, she's got a little bit of a jerkiness to her and uh when she moves a little quirky on that definitely trying to hide it but she's very very clean white, white robes with the red trim and the gold on it all symbolizing uh lathander massive holy symbol of it on her chest she makes no mistakes about her worship of it and uh definitely looks like she actually looks probably more like a cloistered cleric somebody who'd maybe be in a monastery as a cleric not a fighting type um and definitely uh, is smells of the herbs and things from all the healing uh, packets that she has that she carries around to kind of help others around, others about around her. 
Alrighty. Alrighty. So all of you have made your uh, for Nin his uh, his circus had uh, his his little carnival circus that he was with had traveled nearby uh, Squall's End, and he kind of wandered into the into the little town. Um, or, uh, he's, or typically, he's, if I remember, based on the description you you'd sent me, he's he's some, he, he sometimes will get real focused on his hands and not be aware of his surroundings, and he just kind of wandered into town. Uh, the rest of you are in town as well. Uh, there's a small little inn named Mammoth Skies. That's uh, where uh, you got you guys had uh, taken up lodgings uh, while you had all met up and tried to invest and were looking for that information you were looking for. And Carolee had been in there and kind of wandering around. So we'll come into the village square. Thus far, Steve, is she uncovered? Has there been any uh, grumblings of corruption or anything in this town or anything like that people are worried about more than anything else? she's been trying to ask around town and things like that mm, no the town has actually been fairly calm um there is a it's been very calm up until recently um recently there was a convert there was some rumblings at a nearby mine uh the mine is called uh fog crest it's a little outpost in a small mine. They just recently had struck a vein of precious metals, but uh, there's been some some recent rumblings that something is amiss there. That is uh, been about the most you had gleaned to this point. Which will bring us over to our city, our town map. Um, <clears throat> real quick, um, need uh, Titus, Pearl, Maze, and Kara Lee to roll perception checks. Dirty 20. <laughs> Starting off right. Right off the bat. Love it. Ten. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, I am at twenty-one, and okay. I got a twenty-two. Oh wow, you guys are on fire tonight! See what happens when we when we we leave the world of the dread realms. All of a sudden, the dice like us. Let's see how long. Um, so for the four of you, as you're kind of sitting there, we have Carolee, you're looking at like, there's a, there's a small fountain in, in town near, the, near the little marketplace. You're kind of sitting there kind of observing things. Idis, Pearl and Maze, you guys are just outside the inn kind of conversating. It's, it's a nice kind of calm day, uh, in late summer. Uh, so the, so the, the weather is, is fairly decent. Um, you guys hear a, some noise coming from an alleyway behind the, uh, behind, behind one of the buildings. Um, Nin, as you have kind of wandered about staring at your hand, you had inadvertently bumped in to a group, to, uh, a group of, a group of dwarves and they took that as a slight and we're starting to kind of, kind of harass you, and uh, pick on pick on you, and kind of that borderline. You're not quite in a full-on mugging, but right now it's that we're being bullies to you. And, and for the other four, they hear this, 
Um, so as, you've got three of these thugs around you, kind of poking at you. It's like, ha, 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 why are you all covered up like that? And kind of just, you know, kind of just kind of tormenting you. What do you do? The sunlight, my little masters. Um, I, 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 you know, everybody should be covered to prevent melanoma. It's very dangerous. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. Let's take it easy. I didn't mean to call you little, but, but masters, please take it easy now. I'm just, I'm just a simple um, sideshow act for the carnival. I can get you free tickets, really. <laughs> So you got the four, the other four of you hear this at varying degrees. What do you, what do you guys do? Just to double check, and I, I've not met them yet. Is that correct? I'm assuming. No, from where you're sitting, you see uh, the, the 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 halfling, the the human, and the and the and the and the tabaxi kind of conversing. You saw them in the common room the previous night, uh, but you hadn't really kind of kind of come up and introduced yourself. And so I hear this thing. I'll probably probably scared her away. (laughs) Say again. How far away am I from uh, any of the other folks? Um, Here in roll 20, you are probably about 40 feet from Pearl, Maze, and Titus. And probably about 70 feet uh, from Carolee. Okay, and I can't see the map. I'm not no, sure. you can't see them. You were just oh. kind of walking, and they kind of, kind of, they kind of shut. They're kind of in an alleyway, kind of tormenting you. Oh yes, okay. You got it. There's a circus right. in town. That might be fun to go see. If I, if I heard that, uh, him saying that there, there's tickets and stuff. If I heard that, I'll say that. You heard, um. You had heard that there was a circus in town, just uh, uh, outside of town. They were set, they were kind of stopping over, not necessarily setting up a full show because they realized the popular. I mean, this town's got a population of about four thousand people. It's not, but they're really spread out. It's a really spread out kind of community. But they were they the it was just recently come in. They had stopped over. Not sure if they're gonna take the time to set up their tents or not. And so we hear, and so I hear him, like somebody, um, acting like kind of uh, trying to keep from being accosted, if you will. What it kind of sounds like? Yeah, you 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 hear the altercation and whatnot. Okay. And well, then I I sprint actually out the. I get up without any. Sprint out the door as quickly as I can to try to find where the noise is coming from and see what's going on. All right. Can you so see we can the tell us. I don't know why, but mine's all black. Yeah, mine as well. So is mine. Yeah. Mine's just a row of all of our characters. I just <laughs> I just figured I was blind or something. Uh, <laughs> that's a different character. Oh. oh, I can see it on the, I mean, I can see it on the Twitch, I should say. I just can't see it on the, Okay, here we go. Oh, cool. Uh, How's go. that? That's, uh, much, that's better. much better. Much better. <laughs> You have to be careful watching the Twitch version of Roll20, because that's my view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I still am up, all I black. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be. Go ahead and refresh your... Uh... I'll refresh. Yeah, refresh. Come on. And so so we can tell that there's actually a full-on problem from what we've heard, correct? Say that again, Pearl? We can tell that there's a full-on problem from what we heard. Is that correct? You can tell bullies at a distance. Okay. They're, they're, they've got a certain kind of tone and cadence, and you can tell it's escalating. And so okay. with, from my perception roll, which direction do I hear that coming from? Do I have an idea? Uh, it's in roughly this, dire- in roughly start this moving. direction. All right, I will just start moving that way then. Okay. And see. I'm still all black. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 puts me here. Uh, I don't see anything yet. 
No, you need to get around. You need to get around this building to see. Okay. Were you gonna I'll dash? Now I'll dash 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Puts me right there. So as you round that, as you round that corner, you see, you see Nin in his full-on uh, coverings with three th three dwarven kind of thugs all kind of surrounding him, keeping him pinned against the wall of the building and preventing him from escaping. Uh, Titus, Maze, and Pearl, you see this this halfling kind of dart by. Pearl, you recognize the garb as that of a monk. Oh, cool. As, as Carolee darts, and just as she starts to round the corner, you see her stop and start to assess the situation around the corner. Mm -hmm. Which you guys know, based on what you were hearing, that is where some that is where this noise is coming from. Yeah. And, and as soon as I would hear that, I'd be like, hey, somebody's being mean over there. We need to go figure out what's going on. And she'll look at Titus, because he look, remembered from six months ago that he likes her to look at her head first. I'm going to go. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, I'd like to see if I could um, use my uh, um, detect thoughts um, ability here to um, gather the name of whoever's coming around the corner and then use my tele telepathic voice to say... Um, Carolee, sister of mercy, come help me into your mind. All right. I, and I, like I said, I, so when I go around the corner, I see this. I kind of hear that a voice say that they need help or help. And I just say, and I say, hey, leave them alone and pick on somebody your own size, says the three foot one tall hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, shorties. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we go with it. Um, Does Titus say, give me the go ahead? Because if so, I'm going to run over there. Yeah, Titus will be following suit. All right. So measuring, so. The measuring tool is one, two, three. It's probably about the fourth one down. It looks like it's an upside down cube. Ah. Yeah, it says show others or hide from others. Yeah. And you can like make it stretch out and... So with great ease, without even having to sprint, I get over there just fine. So I'm going to round the corner as well, find out what's going on. I'm going to go right up next to the so person. So you round that corner, you see Can these I three dwarves. One's got a battle axe, one's got a war hammer, and one's got a mace. Uh, their weapons are not out, but they're just kind of in that poking fun at Nin. Nin, your ability, you can that's one creature at a time, right? Yes. Okay. So. Just one at a time. Mm hmm like, That's not very nice. Uh, is there something I can do to help this situation? And she just kind of closes her fists to kind of be like... Well, these three gentlemen, and I hesitate to call them gentlemen, accosted me here when, when I was just trying some tricks for the circus. I was trying to bend the water up just like this. And I use my uh, cantrip um, control water to splash some water up on one of the dwarves' faces. The little, <laughs> little little puddle of water nearby you starts to rise up and splash into their face. And all oh, that dear. does is seem to irritate them more. In fact, the one that actually kind of pulls his mace out and kind of does the, the billy club in the hand deal. Yeah. Um, you know, it would be really easy to not get splashed if, if we just kind of separated ways and, and then it's all over, right? I mean... Go and roll a persuasion check. Okay. <laughs> and, um, real quick, real quick before you do that, Carolee, uh, roll an intimidation or a persuasion based on your comment to me. You're, you're muted. Mm -hmm. I'm very intimidating. I'm sure it's going to go really well. So I'm sure it'll go great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I rolled a 15, so that's not bad. And it's plus zero, so it's 15. <laughs> <laughs> that's not horrible. No, it's not horrible. I'd, I'd say, yeah, it's more probably persuasion based uh, for me, just kind of. <laughs> Trying to lighten the mood with that with that comment, uh, but uh, been intimidating. But yeah. all right, they 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 <laughs> serve, they seem to they seem to turn their attention to you with that. And Pearl, what did you get on your uh, persuasion? I got a nineteen. All righty. So they kind of they see the two of you. They see all of you kind of showing up there and. They're like, and, and they're like, eh, this isn't any fun anyway. And they, they start to kind of walk off. <laughs> I hope you have a good day. I kind of go into a little bit of a fugue state with my eyes kind of twitching and I'm saying, oh, no, no, get away, get away, get away from me. And all of a sudden I cast Arms of Hadar, which creates the number of tendrils that come out of my body and start boxing things that are around me about 10 feet around me. Um, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, go ahead and you said 10 feet around you, right? I believe that is. Uh... So that would, that would actually get the three of them go ahead and, uh, Go ahead and roll roll uh, attack rolls for 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 three of the tendrils. Okay, that's a strength fourteen. Um, saving throw. Strength fourteen. Yep. yep. Are those tendrils in all directions or just in front of you? Um, that would be all directions, but I think my back is against the wall. I'm looking at the map, right? Yeah. yeah. Two of them saved, one of them didn't. Okay. So, on the one that didn't, it's 2 needs 6 which is 8 points of damage. And then the other ones, I think, take half. Yeah, half damage. Half damage? Yep. Alrighty, so the other two take four. And that's necrotic damage in case it matter. Alright. Uh, with that, ladies and germs, let's go ahead and roll initiative. Oh, now they yay. are going to continue this fight. They're, they're walking away, and then <laughs> well, I want to make sure I understand. <laughs> Just my own personal, like, who my character is. So they said, okay, fine, they're going to walk away. And then he, do I know he attacked them? You see Nin kind of go into this, like, kind of seizure moment, and right. then all of a sudden these spectral tentacle arms come up out of the ground around him and lash out at the three at the three uh, three thugs. One more tries to lash out at Pearl, but she's just out of range. So she doesn't she doesn't have to worry about it. And I know he acted oh. like it was just happening, but like do I can I make like an insight check or something to see if I believe that or like if it was like an accident or, or what? Um yeah you can make it you can make an insight check. Okay. Just because I want to see what I'm going to do. So uh, that's going to be, a, let's see, a 12 plus 6. So that's going to be a 18. 18. Yeah. Um, Nin, was that intentional or reactionary? <laughs> no, but it's all, uh, it's all unintentional. He didn't know why that happened. That's actually a new one of his spells that he hasn't really used yet. Okay. So it just kind of happened, and then, and then it's done, by the way. It's just an instantaneous attack, so it doesn't keep on going on. Yeah, it's just a one-time hit, and then it goes and then it goes away. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know what was happening. I, sorry, I didn't mean to break your nose. 
<laughs> but it looks good. Uh, persuasion oh, on that, I think? <laughs> or deception, maybe? Yeah, yeah. What was that? What, what, what was that? You want to do what? See if I'm being deceptive or not. Uh, that would be insight. If you're trying to see whether or not he's being deceptive or, or whatnot, you'd want you'd want to roll an insight against him. No, then, no, he's saying he, he, wants, being to, deceptive. he wants to be deceptive. <laughs> uh, then roll a deception check. Yeah, I'm not really trying to be. I'm not really trying to be deceptive, but I guess I'm trying to get out of it. So that's a twenty. Dirty twenty. Anyone? Uh, everybody else, roll insight against it. See if they can uh, beat it. I fourteen for me. So, you know. Yeah, thirteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Mm -hmm. Far as you can tell, he he tell what he tells you is what he is, is the truth. You you really think that's be that looks better? Real quick, let's get those initiative rolls. Titus, what'd you get? Twelve. Oh. <laughs> All righty, Carolee. Sixteen. All right, Maze. Fifteen. Then what'd you get? I got a big old six. Big old six. All right, and I see, uh, I see the nat one for the bubbles. <laughs> um. Uh huh. Yep, they're all going at the bottom of the initiative. All right, first round. Pearl, you're up. What do you do? Uh, can I tell that they're going to attack from this? Yeah, you see the tentacles I lash out at them. You see them turn around and pull out their weapons. Like I said, one's got a battle axe, one's got a war hammer, and one's got a... And a mace. Um, and I can tell not intentional, or we could tell it because he convulsed and stuff. Um, yeah, right. far as far as uh, he made I, it again, I'm going to he, like, he now. Wait a minute, attention. it doesn't look like it was an right. Exactly. So so I'm like, now wait a minute, it looked like it was an accident. Wait, let, 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 let's stop. We don't have to fight. <laughs> but but I I don't think you want to fight, but I can. All right, go and roll persuasion. <laughs> yeah they don't buy it they continue to ready an attack all right so then i would pop them in the face <laughs> i i tried to warn you we'll get over it. i'll have to wait on the next one cause that was your yep, that, that's fine. that was your action to have the car to try and oh yeah, yeah that's fine that's fine we can do that all right, next up is Carolee. Okay, so which one? So they got hurt, right? Yes, um, they got hurt. Uh, the which, one in the back seemed to uh -huh. get the brunt of the ten, of the tentacle. The two on the sides were kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of hit hit, but it was more of a glancing. Okay, and you said they're gone, right? Man, is that correct? Like they kind of appear and then they're gone. On oh, the tentacle, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so I step in here, right in the middle of them. And I say, you know, clearly this was an accident. And I use my, um, and I use healing hands. And I say, let me, I said, let me heal you of your injuries. You can go about your business. Uh, does he let me touch it? Uh, roll of persuasion. Okay. Uh, that's going to be a total, that's 12, at 12. I don't have any pluses. 12? <laughs> yeah. He kind of 
dazed, but he doesn't uh, immediately withdraw when you attempt to touch him. Okay, and I cast uh, I cast uh, cure light wounds on him then. Okay. And that's a seven plus four, so he gets eleven hit points back. All right, he's uh, back up to full and kind of kind of kind of sitting there taking a look real quick. Kind of dips I, his axe d- dips his axe down a little bit. And I Maze, say, you're I, up. Kill you both too. So. All right. Um, Maze will. Move 10 feet up to this corner of the fight. Now, for just so you, you keep going, you can't, the, the, no mo- the, the halfling monk stepped into the middle, and, and it looks like he it looks like he uh, healed one of them. Uh, so. Hmm. Maze doesn't like bullies. This is... Hmm. <laughs> I can not think anyone likes her. bullies, but what's Maze going to do about it? Oh. Well, she's at least got to teach him a little bit of a lesson. So, okay. the one that's in front of Pearl, she's going to pull out her rapier. And she's going to swing at it. Because that's, that's what she would do. Alrighty, go ahead. With sneak attack. Uh, 17 to hit. That'll hit. I'm not acting as her ally right now, Steve, for the sneak attack. <laughs> no, Pearl is. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm <laughs> so that would be 22 points of damage. Oh, geez. Ouch. Wow. Yeah, you you come in there and 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 as as Pearl is talking to this thug who's got the warhammer, and you kind of come up you come up behind him and just slash at him and he just takes a knee. He is in so much pain from that hit. You can do non-lethal too, right? You have to declare it before the killing blow. And then Maze will bend over with her hands on her hips towards him and go, you might want to think twice before you bully somebody and then cross her arms. All right, Titus? Yeah, yeah. With the little lady's head. Is it a free action to face palm? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it wasn't me this time. <laughs> All right. Um... Yeah, I am, uh, I'm going to move, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, I'm going to move, I'm going to move in here, and um, we'll uh, speak to the, the group of, of now hesitant bullies, uh, and, and say, I think there's been enough bloodshed here today. Why don't we just all part ways and, and do so quickly? I fear that I will not be able to contain my compatriots here uh, if you refuse. I think it'd be best if you go now. All right. Is that a persuasion or intimidation? What's the intent? Uh, the intent is uh, to persuade. Okay. Go and roll a persuasion check. Ah, oh, come on. What good's a plus five? Uh, so, ten. <laughs> if one for the fact one of them is, is is like groaning near near the point of passing out that might have worked yeah. but they see the little the, the the little gnome stab one of their buddies and they're just they're, they're not having it brings us to nin what are you going to do you have this group that you've never met seem to be kind of like, hey, let's let's defuse the situation. Let's defuse the situation. Exactly. I'll be saying, look, 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 I'm really sorry. I'm sorry, sorry to you, my would-be rescuers, and sorry to you, my my dwarven friends, and and and, and, I, and I just don't know what what went wrong, but 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 if you if you if you let me just just 
just uh, uh, make it up to you. Everything will be fine. And then I try to cast Preston Digitation on the guy who got wet with the water to dry him out. And hopefully that, uh, that I can also use as a, uh, as a, uh, uh, a persuasion, uh, um, thing to say. All right. I'll let you, I'll let you persuade with advantage and Titus, you have an inspiration you can use at your next convenience. Thank you, chat. Persuasion. Oh, jeez, even with advantage, I got a 13. <laughs> Plus 6 with advantage. I can't even blame it on Avre. No, you can't. <laughs> can't blame this on Avre. Um, I do dry the guy's shirt off. You did. You did kind of press to digitate, and the, the, the wetness is, is gone from his shirt. So he's, uh, he, he, but, um, and given what everybody was doing, it was the, okay, you're, they're kind of weighing their option on this, on I what they're going to get the blood out next. of your shirt, sir. Um, yeah, the thug, uh, the, the thugs kind of look at each other. And, um, they go and they, they grab their buddy and they kind of, they kind of grab him and be like, We'll get you next time, and they 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 haul their they they uh, carry they carry their buddy off. Mm -hmm. All right. Can I just say, Mace puts her hands on her I hips again and looks at him. So they 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 are like, you know what? It's no, not worth it. See you later, guys. I'll take you around town. That might not be a good idea. I turn and I say, you're not making this any easier. <laughs> That's what I said. Oh, what? I'm just trying to be friendly. It's not working. <laughs> it's not my fault, if I mean. It's almost as bad as swinging a sword at him when you're not supposed to, I turn and I say to me. <laughs> I didn't use a sword. I used something. I don't even know what that was. Like, now, quickly before we go <laughs> forward. So, so me and spoke to me in my mind right and 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 called me by my actual name yes is, is that correct and i never i don't never met you before but that's yeah. that's what that's what happened right yeah. okay and then so then i'll say i'll just kind of like visibly kind of calm down a little bit and i'll say how did you do that how did you know my title do what who are you i this Carolee said, you called me Sister of Mercy. Very few people call me that. Oh, that's a pretty name. I'm not really sure what you're talking about. Um, I don't know you, but I, I must have screamed and you heard it in your head. I don't know. Yes, when I came around the corner, you, you get your eye met, eyes met me and I heard your voice in my head. It's call me by name. I don't know. Maybe I just yelled loud enough that it got in your head. What's your name again? My name is Carolee Lighthands, and I extend my hand. Well, thank you. And uh, you notice he's wearing glove, a gloved hand. Uh, it's a little bit damp, but it's not like a water kind of damp. It's more of like, uh, like if the glove were full of, uh, um, like rubber cement kind of idea. It's a little bit moist. I just say, are you, are you injured? Um, nothing but my pride, I think. I think I'm fine. Um, uh, oh, maybe not. And he slumps against the wall of the, uh, the building and kind of sits down on the ground. He's not passed out, but, but he's, he's kind of rubbing his head and 
looking at his hand and he's like, oh dear. And you see this little bit of uh, kind of like a slimy substance coming from his head to his hand when he pulls it away. Oh. Uh, that, that's new. I haven't seen that before. Oh, yes. It's just, it's, it's part of my act. Um, I'm with the circus. That, 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 that's true. I like circus. Paid. They're fun, but I've never seen that at a circus before. People pay to see that? Well, it's mostly not the not the not the slime. It's mostly the water um, things. I can do cool things. You want me to show you? To, here, I I, I I I don't think that now is the time or the place, especially given how much of a handle you seem to have on these abilities. Oh. Um, I don't want to be skewered by whatever that was that attacked the other guy. Uh, so but to be fair, I think it I think it bludgeoned him. I don't think it skewered him. But uh, uh, yeah. So all, all that aside, <laughs> to be um, fair. <laughs> well, is it safe for me to help you to your feet? I think so. Yes. Um, I don't think anything. I haven't seen anything else happen bigger than those tentacles. In fact, that's the first time that's ever happened to me. I'm not sure what that was. But I think I'm okay. He offers you his hand up. And, and uh, Titus will help him to his feet. He's um, pretty light. Pretty scrawny. Can I can I do a history check to see if I'd seen anything like this before in Barovia? Uh, yes. That would be the place to reference. <laughs> Oh, that was so close to an 18. Uh, alas, it is a three. <laughs> Real close. Like, yeah. oh, so close. Yeah, it was like it was bouncing on the 18 and then just rolled to a two plus one. And, you know, here we are. <laughs> you're not really... F whatever, whatever his condition is, you're not sure if it's racial. Mm -hmm. You're not sure if it's environmental. You know, I mean, you're not sure if he's got a... You're really just not sure, but it is really kind of off-putting the amount of mucus that seems to pool in his clothes. I mean, we're not talking. I mean, we're we're it, it kind of the outer layers of his robes are, are 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 dry. But if you were to like put your hand on it for a little while, your hand would come back moist, and you just get a little bit of that that tackiness uh but the the deeper layers are like saturated in this stuff uh thankfully the overall temperature and environment kind of keeps keeps it keeps it dry but his the material of his clothes is a lot like those moisture wicking uh type of things only it just can't compensate for the amount of this kind of mucus and you can tell it's thickest in the hood area along the uh the back of the neck and then it kind of it, it kind of just permeates down from there like the the outer the 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 fur like his sleeves and the the like from the knees down on the clothes on the on the trousers those seem mostly dry but then as you get close to that collar type of area that's where it's the thickest hmm. it's never been so much before it's usually just here by my neck and my my ears and and but I guess maybe the those bullies got it out of me. I don't know uh, how it happened though. Have you always had this happen to you, just at different um, degrees, or is this something new? Uh, it's really gone up after the last six months, and I had a little bit before then, but I don't really remember anything before then. It's, I, I think it's been a year or so since I remembered who I am. I don't even know really, really who I am. Oh, well, um, hmm, sounds like you have uh, multiple things going on there. Um, hmm. But uh, people at the circus are calling me Nin. He goes to shake your hand. So being that I've been around you know, healing people and like you know, training as a healer and things, can I make a medicine check to see if I've ever heard anything like this before? Sure can. Yeah. Okay. And I'll use my uh, mark, mark of healing too to give me an extra four on it. Um, that's 14 and then 3 is 7. Plus 6 is uh, 23. 
Right, it's a waste. I mean, it's a character thing. Out of character. <laughs> Some of what he's describing, uh, you've heard about in your studies. Um, but it, it, the you you've heard about some of the uh, some of these conditions that he's talking about. The fact that they're all kind of conglomerated together. Uh, there's a couple of potential theories uh, to that. But considering you just met him, you're not quite sure uh, more about his particular backstory to kind of clarify what could have per preceded this current state. It is, you have a couple of ideas uh, based on certain things, but you would need to research it to really get a get a good idea. It's kind of like when you do a self-diagnosis on the internet, you put in two or three symptoms and it gives you 20 different results. You're, you're kind of in that in that ballpark. I'm like, web I'm being this, then okay, I got it, I got it. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, and when, I, when he reaches out to shake her hand, she, she'll, she'll very timidly reach it out because I've kind of seen the moisture there and, and she'll kind of try to bring in her claws some so that it's a very barely t barely grabbing his and so that the fur doesn't get matted if you know what I mean oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's kind of one of those it's kind of those it's pleasure yeah. Pleasure. Yeah, just like just <laughs> barely shake your finger. You know? <laughs> just taking the scarf around his neck and kind of making it a little tighter in and that kind of thing. So I'll turn up. So I'm, I, you know, facing him. I'm kind of keeping my right side as usual away from everybody. Like kind of turning and say, so, um, my name's Carolee, and who are you? You seem to be, well, most of you. And I kind of uh, sideways glance at, uh, at Maze, seeming huh. to want to help as well and, and uh, de escalate the situation. Um, what brings you to. I like making friends. Friends are nice. My name's really? Pearl. You're, you're, uh, you, you consider me a friend, really? I extend, if you extend your hand, I extend mine as well. And, and uh, name's, the name's Carolee Lightning. I'm. And traveling around the coast just looking and see if I can help people out. Uh, what brings you here? To Squall's, Squall's End, right? Yep. The town what of Squall's End. Uh, and Titus would look over at Carolee and, and say, I am Titus Lightbear, paladin at your service. Uh, me and my compatriots, uh, and he points to Pearl and, and Maze, uh, come here from a rather unorthodox journey. Uh, and uh, we've, we've worked together and, and solved some mysteries and, and uh, also tried to, to help, uh, help those that we could. And that's, that's what I'm all about as well. So, well met. And my name is Pearl of the Astral Plane, Tribe of White Cliff. And uh, you're using a different name than you were using earlier. I'm confused. She kind of stops. She says, well, sometimes uh, I've done some healing of some people. I've been kind of going up and down the coast doing it. And they've kind of given me a, a title, if you will. Um, they call me the... Some people are calling me Sister of Mercy. I, it's it's too much, to be honest with you. That's why I was surprised they used it. I don't know why they use it, but I think it's just because I've been, I don't know, I try to help out where I can. And sometimes, and sometimes I heal people, and, and they, I guess I show that mercy to them, and they, they appreciate it. Oh, it's a pretty name. I like it. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I definitely try to follow the way of mercy for sure. In, in my in what I do, so I guess it's best. Well, I was not taught in the way of mercy, but I am trying to be nice. <laughs> you can always try. Can, can I uh, do a uh, detect thoughts again using a subtle spell um, um, uh, for my meta magic to make sure people don't see me do it? But I've done before Maze answers. The question as to why she's here. I want to see if I can get some more information from her brain. Okay, and this time I can catch it and say, uh, 
Maze, go ahead and roll a wisdom saving throw. Yeah. What's your uh, spell save DC, Nan? I think it's 14. Okay. That would be a 10. Uh, nope, not able to prevent it. You, uh, you don't realize the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the tech thoughts kind of goes in, so you're able to get some of those surface thoughts. Is basically your name, where you're from. Yeah. So go ahead. And... Yeah. Her name is Maze. Wait, 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 wait. Your I'm... name is Maze. You're from Paradon, right? And yes. you. Who's 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 Alan Pinkerton? To you. Oh. Um, oh wow! <laughs> and you see Maze backing up, kind of behind Titus, <laughs> like. And who has Fritz right now? She checks her pocket. <laughs> <laughs> wait, is Fritz? Is Fritz, Fritz, Fritz is there. Person? I thought Fritz was a person. Oh wait, I don't know. Uh, uh, well, who are you? And when she check when she checks her pocket, and then you see that the little nose, and little ears, a little mouse kind of kind of looks up, kind of sniffs around, mm. and then kind of retreats back into the pocket. <laughs> That's a cute rodent. <sighs> Are you okay? Um. Yeah. I'm. 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 I'm good, except for the slime. Uh, at, at this point, uh, Titus. Seeing Maze's reaction and and hearing what Nan was saying, uh, he'll look over to Nan and say, "You know, it's not exactly polite to read the mind of people that you've only just met, especially if you're trying to befriend them. Uh, perhaps you would avoid that in the future." Oh, are you doing that? I don't like that. That's what the that uh, that gray thing did. did remember, the one that the, the fake pearl did. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you're right. I, I guess I would be, uh, but I don't know. I, 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 I just, I've been alone for so long. I didn't know how to, anyway, I don't know. You're right. I shouldn't do that. You're right. I'm sorry. Mace kind of stops with her hand on her rapier after realizing what was just said and goes, is he one of them? And she's, she's kind of grinning as she pulls her rapier out. Like, well, I've um, never seen one of them here before. I've only seen them in Paradon. But do you think they could have gotten in here? I mean, we went from there to here, so they might have been able to go from there to there. Please, who are you talking about? I just don't know what you're talking about. I'm not one of them unless it's good. In that case, I am one. But if it's bad, I'm not. Mazel. Really. Maze will take the tip of her rapier and poke Titus in the butt and go, go get it. <laughs> that away. Go get what? I can't tell you one way or the other because if he was, you wouldn't be able to tell. <laughs> so she finds that one little chink in her plate armor and is written. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Titus just kind of swats uh, at, at, at Maze uh, as discreetly as he can, and uh, and and says, uh, "Just just calm yourself. We're we're not in Paradon anymore." Yeah, but we went from Paradon to here, so couldn't they come from there to here? That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. if if they truly were intent on finding us, I don't think it would have taken six months to do it. Well, We're doing a lot of wandering, though. What is Paragon? Parag what is, where are you talking about? Home. You're not from... Is that another town, then, here on the Sword Coast? But I've, I've never heard of that before. It's this really dark place, and they're kind of stuck up there, and there were these really weird creatures that hey. kept feeding into it. What? what? Some. some. You, you forgot to insert the word. Some. Some of them were a little, um, <laughs> you know, uh, not down to earth, uh, I would say. 
Uh, but we... Maze, uh, you know, she. Oh no, Maze is my friend. I like her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She has Fritz, and I get to hold him, and he's nice. But oh, you okay. can't take Fritz too far away from her, or he gets sad. Mm-hmm. That's I uh, won't want to make the little mouse too sad. No, we wouldn't want to do that. That'd be sad. He cries little mousy tears, and he gets oh. everywhere. And, yeah, it's all. So, I'll say, well, um, I appreciate your help. It was, it was nice to meet you. Um, uh, and I turn to and then I said, is there anything else you need? If not, I'm, I'm kind of going to go check out uh, this. Um, I might go check out this mine. Um, I guess there's something maybe amiss there. And, and I just like to try to see what's going on there. So. Well, what, if you go away, would you come back and see the circus, or, or just see me stay on the on the street? I do some performance off 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 the books. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'd I love mean, to. I, well, what I really need is is what the the cat the pretty cat lady was saying is is I, I could use some friends really. Um, but you know, I know if you you wouldn't if you're if you don't don't if you find me annoying or. Or or, or, or or too disgusting, it's okay, I know. No, 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 no. I'd still be a friend with you, you know. Really? That doesn't that doesn't stop me from being a friend with someone. Believe me, this is true. <laughs> yes, but you, you, you hey. are all good people, I can tell. I mean, not many people would come running when they heard me holler like a, like a, like a, like a, like a plucked chicken. She, I, Carolee, deliberately, she stops and she says, she said, uh, I'll, I'll help anyone anytime. And so she makes a concerted effort to, like, put her arm, hand on him, on his shoulder, or I guess, you know, he's tall, on his elbow, <laughs> <laughs> on his elbow, and, like, and rest it there deliberately because he said something about being disgusting. And, and I said, Out, outward appearances are all, can always be deceiving. doesn't matter. I'll be your friend if you need a friend. Oh, and that's she's, great. She's yeah, I promise I will try. I try won't. I won't try. I'll try not to, to, to make the make anything dangerous happen again, or get us into trouble, or or or, or think your thoughts while you're still thinking them, um, or any of that really. Maybe maybe we could help him practice his ability so he doesn't do it by accident. Well, that could be good. Just because Titus, you have a little bit of magic, and, and Maze, you have a little bit of magic, so you guys can teach him, right? I I mean, I have this one thing that kind of catches things on fire every once in a while, but other than that, it's not been dangerous. <laughs> I will do I whatever I can. Maybe move my hand off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, kind of, kind of at the comment of fire. At the comment of fire, you, you see Carolee kind of involuntarily twitch. And I twitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I turn uh, my face more to the side. <laughs> Maisel jump out from behind Titus and go. I can, I can do fire now too, and she'll cast, create bonfire just right oh, there beside geez. us. <laughs> <laughs> Carolee, well, give well, me a custom saving throw. To throw. Not run the <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, are we supposed to be a party? Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> Carly, what'd you get for that con saving throw? Uh, yeah, I would say which one is it? I'll roll. But I'll do whatever you say. I'll willfully fail. No, <laughs> if it's a con, it's a ten. Yeah, uh, a you, you you see Maze kind of get out and get really excited, and as she casts it, and you see this little bonfire appear up, you 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 kind of take a couple of steps back. For but sure, it, it's just like, and then it and then the, it's there, and then it goes out, and it's just like, okay, we're cool, we're cool, we're cool. <laughs> you got a little bit of a cold sweat going at that rea at, at that. <laughs> it's like. I don't do a good job hiding my dis my uh, my reaction. <laughs> sure. Carly, are you sure you're okay? Yeah, yes. Are you sorry, ready? I just uh, sometimes sorry, just fire sometimes. Not a big deal, but uh, it's okay. I'm fine. All right. Well, 
And I won't, I won't, I won't use any of my fire stuff that I know. I don't even remember what I know. Yeah, we may as well kind of figure out how to fix that. Yeah. And Maisel kind of lower her head down and go and hide behind Tynus again. <laughs> Do we still have the bonfire out there in the alley? No, the bonfire's oh. gone. Oh. Hey, it's okay. I liked it. It was pretty. You didn't know. I, I just wanted to show you the new stuff I could do. I like it. It's nice. It's fine. I, I'm, some like I said, just it took me by surprise. At least when you do new stuff, Maze, at least you don't get slime on your face. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that. I, I, I'm happy about that. <laughs> yeah, see, it's great, isn't it? See, now, now we're all becoming friends, aren't we? Is that the way this yeah, I like making friends. You, you said you're going to, to, to a uh, uh, mine? Yeah, I've been in town for a few days, and I've been... I, I like to look and see what I can do to help out, and uh, the only thing I've really heard in town here is that uh, there's this uh, place called uh, Fogcrest, the mine, and uh, I guess they produce precious metals and minerals and other things there, or metals, and uh, there might be something in this out there, so I thought, I didn't have anything else to do, so I thought I'd go check it out. I've never been in a mine, that sounds like fun. I like going to places that I haven't been to before. You're more than welcome to, to, to join me in checking it out. I, I just I didn't I don't know anything about it. So she'll turn to Titus and be like, "Can we go?" And Maisel reach up and she'll poke Titus and she'll whisper towards him, "We better go with her because she heals the enemies. She might need our help." Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that. Uh, Titus looks at uh, Carolee and and says. Uh, it's my mission to do everything I can to share the light in this world, and and if I can bring the light to a dark mind, I am at your service. Do you have a visible holy symbol, Titus? Uh, you could see it's not a. Um, I don't have a visible holy symbol, but you can get the sense of uh, the shield that I have uh, wrapped to my to my arm. Uh, it. It shows uh, this uh, tree coming up through its center, branching out to the green foliage, and then sunlight uh, shining through it. Because yeah. uh, Lathander symbol of the, of the sun, rising sun as well. So that's you know, mm -hmm. the morning. Light. So I, I, I say, well, I would absolutely love your, your company. Then uh, I, I think it'd be great. But I, but I don't have anything pressing there. And she turns to Zen and says, if you need to do you're more than welcome to come unless you need something to do with your circuit, then that would be case. No, no, I would love to come. That sounds great. Aren't mines dark, though? Yeah, but we have someone who brings light. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we have two light people. You know what, though? I think, I, I think, um, for a little while now, I think I can see in the dark. So... That, that might That's be helpful. useful, I think. Maybe I can help this time, I think. Uh, and and full disclosure, so there's no confusion. When I say I bring light to the world, that's more metaphorical light. <laughs> so if you're counting on me to be able to see in the dark, or I can bring a torch. I can, I can do that. I, I can bring light. I, it's bringing light, but I just full disclosure don't want to get in the mind and you say, Hey, Titus, can you uh, shed some light on the situation? I might just be able to talk about it. Then Maze will jump out from behind Titus and use her can't trip light on her hand and go, Look, I can bring light and just kind of shine it towards Carolee and then, like, Ooh, pretty. Well, perfect. I can't see in the dark either, so that's perfect. As long as you shine it where there creates shadows, I'm good. Because shadows. shadows are very helpful for me. <laughs> I hope that's where you want us to be going, Steve. Sorry about that. <laughs> Don't right. bad in time uh, so I guess uh, you five travel, start to travel Watch toward it. the mine. Yeah, well, uh, yes. If I've heard anywhere about where it is, I guess I'll start. Heading that direction. If not, I guess we can start asking. Around. 
you go in, in for the sake of brevity, uh, you go and you, you you speak out. You speak to one of the one of the, the one of the town officials. Uh, you find out that Squall's End actually is run by like a council of uh, of, of individuals that have been there uh, a while, and just to go in and follow up with that, you find out that uh, yes, it's Fogcrest Mine. It's an out. It's a. It's an outpost. Uh, it's about about 10 miles from town um they typically uh get like precious metals and sometimes they get some precious metals and whatnot to bring out to for the blacksmith in town to work on in fact that one of the council members speak to happens to be the blacksmith who has who also funds the has ownership of the mine so it's kind of got both ends of that distribute of that um distribution of manufacturing uh, he said they recently found a new vein of of uh, ore that they were starting to mine, but they started to have some. There were starting to be some tremors in the area, and a couple of the miners had gone missing. And they were very curious, and they're not quite sure how to deal with it. Uh, if if uh, showing the interest you show in that, they're willing to offer each of you uh, 100 gold to go to the mine and investigate and uh, make the mine safe again. Now, when you say missing minors, you don't mean small children, right? No. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. No, no. The, oh, this I isn't get unaccompanied minors or anything like that. This is, a, you know, actual people who, who go and work the ore. A couple of them have gone missing. There have been some conversation about some growling or whatever, or just kind of some rumbling, uh, like uh, some, uh, some tremors. And then somebody goes missing, and they're understandably a little freaked out. So... Uh, being a group of, uh, they they were kind of looking, hoping a group of adventurers would come by to go and investigate this and to make it safe. <laughs> and did he mean really? Did he mean the hundred gold pieces? That's 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 more than I know. I mean, yeah, that's a lot more than they pay at the circus. Oh, I, I could use. The, I mean, for the that, for this blacksmith, he he take the miners, for, but yeah. Conversing with him, he he he. The fact that he has the mine and he can smelt the metal and then use the metal to make things and then every so often ship them out on the merchant ship it's you know it, it to have that loss of production is very detrimental so for him making the mine safe is well worth the cost so he has no pro he, he has no problem with you know paying a like he said 100 gold per person for each of you to go and go and investigate and find out what's going on mine and resolve whatever is in there to make it safe. Wow, I would have done it for a lot less. Shh, I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> and we have the basic idea of where um Yeah, it's uh, about ten mile ten ten miles um northeast of town. Uh you know so in a, kind of a small hilly kind of a small hilly a crag area. Uh it's uh, just out there so you guys kind of gather yourselves up and uh, make your way to the mine and that's where we will take a quick 10 minute break so we can get up stretch all those things and when we come back we will enter the mine cool. so awesome. big shout out to everyone in the chat for watching so far thank you uh, love all the bits and the support so far so stay tuned we'll be right back and we'll see what's in the mine <laughs> and we're back how is everyone doing Did you enjoy your break enjoy the, the brief little break ready to see what happens next yes uh, more chaos i'm sure <laughs> yeah, hey at least it wasn't my fault this time <laughs> this weird. time she says <laughs> this yeah. time that, that, that is kind of weird though because that's usually my fault are you scared? You're gonna have to mature. No, never. <laughs> I know it's a dirty word. Uh huh. Character growth. We'll call it character growth. Yeah, yeah. No, Soulcast <laughs> did the character growth. Pearl, eh. Yeah, <laughs> Here we go. All right. So you guys have traveled out. Uh, you come up on this uh on this mine, and. Uh, it's a it, it it's a fairly basic kind of outpost 
with the mind behind it you see you see kind of like a like a like a kind of haphazardly built uh portcullis or not portcullis um air, uh basically the I'm trying to remember the word i can't remember the word now it's not portcullis it's 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 something else it's like when you think of like old frontier forts it's got the wooden beam uh wall there's a gate Huh? Palisade. The palisade. That's the one. It was one of those. Portcullis pa Palisade. Yes. A palisade. Oh. A, 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 a low, probably about eight foot tall palisade that uh, surrounds, um, is, comes up onto this side of a hill. There's a there's a gateway that comes in, and as you come in, and you, they, it's it's the gates open. I mean, it's it's kind of one of those things. This is built for if there's a raid. On the area, it, it's a, it's a it's a it's a mild uh, barrier of defense. <laughs> so, and then um, as you as, as you guys come in, there's a couple of little little like bunkhouse and things like that, and you see this cave entrance and these 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 kind of the, the, that leads in to the mine. As you go in, you see wooden beams that kind of hold up the area as uh as you kind of pro as you progress down every every so often there are some lanterns but as you uh as you kind of try to progress deeper there's a lot le there's fewer lanterns like the people haven't gone this far um what time of day is it see before you go underground late afternoon late afternoon uh late yeah, late afternoon uh, time frame when you get there and start to go in. And is this uh, is this mine traversed with foot traffic or is there mining carts? If you have, are uh, there is I'm some track. There is some yeah. track, uh, but the track uh, the track doesn't extend very far. You kind of, as you kind of go in, you see the track kind of gets to a point for a loading, and then uh, it kind of bring it, where it turns and goes down uh, further. That you look, you look, and you see the signs that they are starting to lay more track as they get deeper. But um, as you look about and see how the track is being laid and what you what you find out about as far as the metals. It seems they're forging the track with what they get out of the mine. So it's a, it's one, it, it's very much, we we mine it, we for, we we take what we can for this, and then the, like the more precious metals are sent over to for the blacksmith. But then some of the lower quality stuff is turned into kind of an iron like ore, iron like sub iron like, and then made into track as it goes you can actually see that that little forge area in the in the uh, in the mm. fort it's it's just not very big because the track it, the track segments are only about six feet mm. uh, per track and then you start to see how that's all kind of work together so you you can you can imagine that while the tunnel continues on the the track is very slow to catch up mm how wide is the tunnel uh most of the tunnel is about 10 feet wide with a mm -hmm. 10 foot ceiling mm -hmm. every so often there's a branch off where it opens up into more like a 20 foot uh area but the ceiling stays at about that 10 foot height and spaced every few feet are like these thick wooden beams that are roughly hewn to kind of hold up and shore up the uh cat the cavern as you progress uh does the does the tunnel appear uh abandoned or are there people moving about <clears throat> toward the front toward the toward the entrance people are kind of move, moving about and um you see a couple of a couple people kind of kind of shuffling through and sorting or a couple of them are carrying stuff from different uh different areas not a whole lot uh you kind of you kind of get the sense by what they bring is they haven't is is kind of like the the remnants right there it's like they've almost played those areas out 
mm. and now it's just all the lot like a lot of they're really struggling to get some of the lower quality stuff together to continue like forging track let alone the good mineral that is sent over for the blacksmith to use in his forge in town and uh what uh what what race of people are are in in this tunnel you see a variety it... you see some you see some dwarves you see some sees humans a uh, couple of li couple of lizard folk are there that's a it's kind of a menagerie the whole the whole world with Kofin is every race is really kind of intermixed mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. due to generation and generation mm -hmm. of everything kind of being spread out after the last calamity that struck and really kind of drove a lot of different races to be kind of everywhere Granted, there are some some are in higher pockets than others, but in general, you'll find just about every race represent represented. I mean, you see you see a human and an orc conversating about the previous night's uh, dice game and who won and who lost and the next rematch. Uh, is there anyone nearby that looks like they might have some position or rank as like a foreman of a crew? Uh, that we could converse with before venturing into this mine into the unknown. Uh, go ahead and roll a perception. This is so exciting. I've never been in a mine before. Neither have I. Wow. Then we can share this together, huh? Yeah. I bet you there's lots of shadows. I like shadows. They're pretty. Shadows are kind of scary, but yeah, okay. You know what? I can use my. I can. I can use uh, uh, this. This. I can make the the lamp glow brighter if you want. Oh no, I'm I'm good. I like I like the shadows. I I, I use it to sell. Oh, okay, okay, all right, all right. I won't do that then. Boy, I can see pretty far. Can you guys can you guys see far down there? I can. Uh, that's a ten for me, Scoob. Um, <clears throat> kind of hard to make out. Everybody's kind of kind kind of a little grimy. Um, but you do see there is an orc that seems to be kind of directing things he doesn't seem as dirty as some of the others and uh as you as you kind of as you guys kind of come in and start looking around he walks up he kind of look kind of catches an eye on you um tells the dwarf he's talking to to hold off a moment comes over to you and asks i help you lads oh maybe i can help you sir i've got i can clean your your rope from the from the dust and the charcoal what do you think? No? Okay. Remember, I mean, we're already here to help. Oh, all right, yeah. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just eager to, to please, I think, maybe. Apparently, uh, you're, here to, you, you, you're here to help, you say? Yeah, I like to help. And I've never been in a mine before, so that sounds like fun, too. Then, yeah. uh, he kind of looks at you and looks at you, look, uh, kind of sits there and it's like well we take all kinds for workers but uh i kind of don't need any workers right now we've uh things have been kind of slow with uh what's been happening deeper down yeah that's why we're here for the what ha what's happening so, so what missing exactly is happening do you know more details than the, the other people do i don't work anyhow so i won't get in your way He's rather odd. So he, he turns over and says, "Yeah, we uh, we were exploring a pit. We were setting up a tunnel about 300 feet down. Uh, found a sign of some vein of some mithril, and uh, as we were kind of getting in there, we kind of got to a uh, we we shored up kind of like this natural cavern. But uh, as we were starting to branch off, all of a sudden, uh, a couple of my a couple of miners working working third shift va vanished." And uh, there was a cave in shortly thereafter, so we mo we had to move on to another area. Um, every time we seem to get into a new spot and get it shored up, there's a there's a someone goes missing, and then there's a cave in. Kind of happened a couple of times over the last uh, few last uh, month or so, and uh, it's hard to keep workers when uh, rumors of uh, some something something take ta taking them is uh, really. Uh, Kind of distracted. Well, we could try and find it, maybe. What do you guys think? Ooh, we're good at finding people. 
Did you say every time you open up, is it specifically just mithril veins or any of the new veins? No, the mithril just happens to be what we found. So we open up the area, we get it excavated, people go in to push further, all of a sudden there's a cave in, somebody goes missing, or somebody goes missing, then there's a cave in. And then we and then we have to excavate it out, and that takes a couple of days. And then, and so it's just been kind of a vicious and really slowed down our production. Huh. Do you see these cross beams up here? It's fascinating. Yeah. That one's wow. oak. That one's hickory. No, oh, well, four. Know your wood. About twenty miles here at a logging camp. We get them from. Oh, the logging camp. Can we go to the logging camp next? Focus. Maybe after this. After focus. This. Focus, man. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> One thing at a time, folks. <laughs> well, there's nothing after. One after thing at a time. Let's. Why are you saying people went missing on the lower level and they were trying to mine mithril? Yeah, he sits there and he point. He points down. Uh, points down a path that leads off to the, leads off to the left and goes down. Yeah. Follow that to the end if you're curious. Um, Is that? So there's no branches off of that? We'd be able to get to it. Yeah, that's pretty much a straight shot down. Okay, and then um, you said there was kind of some lights in here, but it's intermittent. So that tunnel, does that look dark? Yeah. That tunnel that tunnel is kind of, kind of, kind of dark. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll look over to the uh, the orc and, and ask him, um, perhaps you could spare uh, a few torches and one of your men to show where the cave in occurred? Torches, yes. A uh, worker? No, no one will go down that path any. No, no one will go down that path anymore. But if you want hey, some torches? Yeah, I could. Uh, I could do you better and give you a couple of give you a couple of hooded lanterns to carry to find some light for you. We keep a few on hand for some of the workers who can't see in the dark. I appreciate uh, it. Do you, do you guys have a map, maybe? Ooh, a map. Maps are it's fascinating. Shows you the roads and the, and the streams and the lakes and the towns and, and all that. Well, I don't think there's any towns down in the cave. So, oh. I, so I I pull out my cartography tools and I'll say and I'll kind of start. I'll say I'll I'll help map it as we go. And I have some other ones I can show you after we're done with this one. I'm very excited. Oh, that's cool. You're useful. I like you. Thank, thank you. And he goes. He, he he steps away. Pulls a couple of hooded lanterns off 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 of a, off the wall. Yeah, make sure they got oil and light, and hands them over. It's like, all right. Feel free. Oh, can I go first? Because I can see. Sure. Great. No objection here. Great, great, great. Let me I get to go first too, because I can see too. No, you you stay by me. Aww. Oh, why, I'm sorry. You said it. You said it uh, before. I, I I missed it. How wide are the trunks of this? I'm a rough thing. Uh, the main the these trunks that are going down are roughly 10, 10, 10 foot wide by ten foot high. See, see, that's not in the room for him and I to walk together, see? Then starts walking backwards towards the back of the party. See, I'm leading. The, the, the other way. The... Okay, he turns around and walks backwards into the mine. See, maybe I should walk up with him. Sounds Hi, guys. Good. At least um, I can see you. Um... Maze will reach into her pocket, pull out Fritz, and <laughs> hand him over to Pearl. <laughs> Yay! I haven't had a chance to hold Fritz in a long time. Maybe she'll start stroking his head. While they're doing now that, go Titus, go ahead and roll a D100 for me. Uh, I'll, I'll, take one of the, I'll take one of the lanterns, Steve. He's okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, and I jerk out my broom of flying and hop on it and cast light on the tip of it so okay. i can use it like a flashlight oh my right. gosh that's amazing how did you that that broom flies or is it you that flies no it's the broom it's the broom mm -hmm. wow i've ridden Girl. on it it's fun does it does it still sweep up dust because that would be awesome if it swept up dust and flew uh, 
I think. Yes. So, if you want to. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Not at the same time, though, I'm sure. Uh, Scoop, that's uh, 64 for me. 64, okay. Uh, um, Mays, remind me again how what, how the light spell, how much light is ca is given off from the light spell? Uh, bright light in a 20-foot radius and dim light for an additional 20 feet. Oh, yep. the light can be colored as you like. It's a blue light. <laughs> <laughs> it's a blue light. Okay. Man is kind of still walking backward. Trying, you know, it's hard walking like this. Uh, yeah. so <laughs> Carol took a hooded up in front lantern. Next to him, the right way. So Carol took a hooded lantern. How much light do you have in the lantern emit? It's thirty. It's. Uh, I'll just. I'll do 30 feet. I'll just do the whole thing. Okay. 30 feet bright, 30 foot dim. Yeah. Okay. You it realize we're going to have every single creature know we're coming. Who's taking the other lantern? Titus? Yeah. Okay. How how much of it are you keeping? How much, uh, how much light are you letting it give off? Uh, seeing that uh, everybody else is going fully bright, I'm going to give it th uh, 30 feet as well. Okay. Why don't we... It's up to you, but why don't we hold off on your lane? We we'll probably have enough light, but just the, the lights going this morning, just in case you run out or something like that. Okay. It's up to you. I mean, obviously. Yeah. You know, my, I'll, I'll run up ahead and he changes direction and runs up ahead. How out far? 30 feet limit. So the two of them in front, um, you, Maze, where you, where do you usually? Um, that I don't care. I, I'm up front somewhere. Sorry, okay. so what's the marching order? Is this, do you want the two of them in Nin front? And in the middle and Pearl in front. Nin and, and Pearl are in front. And okay. I, I'm thinking we're, if, if Titus lets me, goes far enough ahead that we're still kind of in the shadows because we can see without it. That way we can scout, but we're still close enough to them that, you know, they can get to us. So like right, right past the light, basically. That's the idea. Okay. Okay. So I'll just have Maze in front of me, and then I'll be behind her. That way, our lights are kind of overlapping or whatever. Actually, Pearl, I kind of like these shadows. They remind me of being in the forest. Oh, I like forests. I can climb the trees and pound from one branch to the other. I like that. Yeah, I just like them because I can hide. Oh, hiding is really useful too. I'm good at that. Yeah. Uh, I'll look over to Maze and say, well. If we can't see him, at least we'll hear him. Uh, as you're as you're progressing, <laughs> progressing down the tunnel, uh, just at the end of the bright light, as it gets into the dim light, uh, thirty feet out, you see the two. You see the two uh, Nin and Pearl's back as they're kind of going. Um, Titus, at some point in in, in, a, in a little crack in a corner along the path something catches your eye and you when you go to investigate you find an an origami bird hmm. that hmm. was just kind of nestled in the crack that you swear wasn't there a moment ago yep i read that one before so you so. get and <laughs> it, you get a paper bird <laughs> That goes along with your balloon pack, I think. <laughs> uh, hey, did, did, was he able to to go to the element of plane while during those six months to get that re redone? <laughs> it wasn't on my to do list. Uh -huh. I don't know. I'm teasing. And as you go to grab the paper bird, you actually find that's a it's a it's a small box with a paper bird written on, in blossomed on it, and inside you find eight sheets of paper. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take this down. This must be important. There's your <laughs> gift from the trickster. Look at that. Thank um, you, chat. <laughs> so, my, mm -hmm. my, with my observant peep that I picked up, my passive perception is 21. That's ridiculous. So, you would have you would have seen Titus, you would have seen Titus go and pull the box oh. out. But, yeah. No, I just was like looking at that and I was like, wait, hold on. Why is it? <laughs> uh, That's crazy. 
And I guess it only only affects passive perception. Okay, because I it was throwing me off because my perception number was not that was not I mean it was plus six, but I couldn't figure that out. Now I'm All righty, so as you guys are progressing down the path, you see it narrow a little bit as it's been roughly re-excavated. Looks like it hasn't been widened out to the full 10 feet. Uh, Pearl and Nin, you guys see this first, and as you kind of get through, you realize it goes from like 10 feet wide to 5 feet wide. And then as you pass through... I would probably go in front of Nin. Okay. As you guys pass through, you come into uh, a, a, a cavern that is roughly 30 feet wide. Wow. It's still with only a 10-foot ceiling, but you see there are several beams that have recently been put back, put up. They're with a, with a row of beams along the center of this big cavern. Okay. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, um, and uh, I would look around. I mean, I don't know if I know what Mithril looks like, but I'm looking for the veins of Mithril to know if we're in the right place or not. I'm looking behind boulders right. and wood and stuff just to make sure nothing scares me. <laughs> so as you guys... Uh, so you're trying to figure out what Mithril is? Well, I, I wasn't sure if she would know what Mithril looks like, but they said that the, the the problem started where they found this vein of Mithril, so I'm trying to find the place where the problem started. So obviously, you know. Go ahead and roll an investigation check. Okay. Can I help her out? You can, you can roll your own investigation if you like. Okay. Can I be ornery and put my glass sun look really close at everything? No, I'm joking. <laughs> you got them. Use them. All right. I will then. Yeah, mine didn't work out. Okay. That big old six really enjoyed me. That worked out. Okay. Uh, Fifteen. Okay. And what'd you get? I got a green pink six. <laughs> you get obsessed with looking at a particular rock for some reason. You're just focused on this rock and trying to determine all of its all of its features and geometric shapes. Oh, I wonder if this is a uh, isohedron or a, or a rhombus or <laughs> what kind of crystals this makes this. <laughs> Wonderful. Pearl, you look at it and Pearl, you see this. Looking at this area, yeah. you can tell it was recently excavated. Uh -huh. There's a lot of loose rubble, and um, there, there's some loose rubble in there. And as you kind of come in, you looking at the beams that are used to support the cavern. Uh -huh. Look like they've been recently placed up there. You see, yeah. looking about, there are piles of rubble along the edges okay. of the uh, of the cavern. So you kind of have a good, you kind of have a, you can make an, make an, a leap of faith that this is probably an area that had been seen in several cave-ins recently and had been re-excavated. So let's not um, play with the pretty scratching posts then, right? Are there any other entrances or exits from this room? Um, your dark vision is 60 feet, correct? Yes. Uh, you see at the as you as you guys kind of walk through and look at this, you see that the, you see the tunnel the the tunnel kind of narrows a bit, and then continue and then continues on, proceed uh, presumably to yet another section. Um, uh, j just to keep good faith and also because of Fritz, I'll run back really quick um, I, uh, to Titus and them and says, "We found a big room." Don't touch the pretty scratching post. I think it might make the the ceiling cave in. Okay. 
Pearl, are so you She says there? that, and you guys all kind of go in. You start, you see this large, you see this cavern with these beams along the center as it progresses down, and you kind of, kind of looking about and, and seeing there. And Pearl, being Pearl, darts off to the leading edge to continue on. And I need uh, Pearl and Nin to give me uh, perception. Twenty. Nineteen. All right. As you guys uh, move forward, after, when you get to be about a uh, little past halfway, you start to feel rumbling, and you see uh, they're they're kind of a kind of a rumbling, and then. About 20 feet ahead of you, there's like this explosion of dirt from beneath Hello. as this large creature that mm. pops out and starts in um, a lot like a shark burrowing through earth. I knew it. As soon as he said something coming out of the ground, I knew it. Oh. And it comes up and it leaps at you. And... Mm. Because your your perceptions were so high, it does not uh, does not get you guys dart out of the way for the surprise, and we'll roll initiative. Uh, do we hear? Can we roll? Can we roll initiative too? Yeah, you guys are oh, in. Yeah, you I guys see I, I, this? It's okay. it's because you're thirty feet behind them. You hear it more than see it, and then as you're standing there, you see Pearl and Nin kind of dart off to the side as this huge creature just lands on the ground and and looks at you. Guy's a dirt shark! <laughs> Dirty shark? That's an understatement. Well, at least I didn't say it was a street shark. Oh, yeah. Land shark. He probably wants to take my rock. Oh, that could be. Uh, 16 initiative for me. Um, would we know what this creature is at all? Was like adventures and all that stuff that we've done? Like what you're traveling around? Hold that thought. Yep. Oh, nice math. All right, so Titus, you got a 16? Yes, sir. Early? 19. Pearl? I got an 11, I think. Yep, 11. Maze? 23. Nin? I have a 22. I just use a sword and shield, right? Yes, sir. Okay. That's what I was thinking with the lamp thing. That's why I was thinking I would hold the lamp. Just... Mm -hmm. What's the question? 
I was asking him if, what he was using weapon wise, just so I knew. Yeah, you and Titus, uh, yeah. Yeah. Then you said you got a 22? Yeah. Did it's it's leap down onto you, and after it, it kind of leaps in, and you guys dart out of the way, goes to. Goes to charge over and dive in and start to burrow into the wall. Uh, Pearl and Nen, both of you get opportunity attacks because it moved out of your space. Cool. Way to start a battle. Not one. <laughs> Nin? Nin uh, goes down to his belt and pulls out two daggers, looks at him, and thinks, What do I do with these? And he jumps in and starts trying to stab the uh, creature. Okay. He goes, by. I guess I only get one of them. Yeah. He's an opportunity. Well, for attack, what'd you get? 23. 23 will hit. Roll damage. And the dagger causes seven points of damage. All right. All right. So... Real quick to handle that surprise bit out of the way. Um, top of the order with Maze. Uh, you see from your light up there, you see that some large thing had jumped and landed in between uh, Pearl and Nin and then dart off and burrow into the rock. And you start to see the see you start to see dust fall a little bit from the ceiling. <laughs> Um, hmm. Well, I guess I'm still on my broom. Uh, I am going to fly out towards Pearl. And can I hold an action to attack with my rapier if that thing pops up sure can. near me again. You certainly can. I will do that. Okay. Nin, you're next. Carly, you're on deck. Oh, go. Did you see that? I think I stabbed them. I've never done that before. I'm going to um, I hear look. you. Look in the direction. Did he go? Um, hold on, let me change my pointer here. You see to yeah. you see to your you see in that area. There's a hole where it started to burrow its way through. All right, it's right about here where I'm peeing. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna go up to the hole and look in. 
All right, you see, you see down the hole about fifteen, about ten feet or so. You see, it starts to, starts to curve, and you lose, and you curves, uh, you lose sight uh, as uh, around the as it bends. Uh, goes in and and curves after how many feet? About fifteen feet in, it starts to turn. It turns. Okay, I'll whisper back to the other uh, group. It burrowed over here, but I can't see it anymore. In a not so quiet voice. All right, Carolee, you're up. Titus, you're on deck. I um, put the um, lantern down by my feet, and I pull up my crossbow, and I ready an action for if I see it to shoot. Okay, so you're ready on your crossbow bolt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Titus, you're up. I will uh, use uh, my bonus action to activate the Eldritch Claw tattoo. Yeah. And that will enable me to uh, extend my melee attacks to 30 feet, or by 30 feet, and add a d6 of damage to each melee attack. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to move uh, over to... Um, this side of maze, and ready and a ready and attack if it surfaces. All right, Pearl, you're up. Okay. Hmm. Trying to think of where the best place would be to stand. I don't really think there's a good place. I'll just stay where I am. Uh, and ready it. Well, uh, what happened to my uh, quarterstaff when I rolled on that one? Um, you dropped it. All right, I'm going to pick it up then. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I don't know if I can still ready in action or not, but. Uh, it gives a free action to pick it back up. So if you want to ready in action. Okay. Yeah, then already in action uh, to to hit the bull, uh, hit the creature since I don't know what it is yet. Um, to to uh, hit it if I uh, see it. Okay. But I'm gonna try and be really quiet and not move, and really listen for it. All right. Any dust? Uh, uh, before I start listening to it, I'm gonna say, point up to the ceiling. Not safe. So the creature uh, comes charging out of the ground. Uh, near where it jumped in. And then it does its uh, standing leap. Which allows it to jump uh, roughly 30 feet. We shoot wow. before it or? Say again? The ready action to try shoot before it leaps, or as soon as you see it, uh, you would be able to get that shot off. Okay. Eighteen. Five. So twenty-three. Hit. Twenty-three to hit. Twenty-three will hit. Roll damage. Mm -hmm. That's three. That's a six plus three is nine. All right. As it comes in, it leaps over, plowing through the first beam and landing on Titus and Maze. Oh my god, it jumped so far. It didn't hit the beam at all, did it? It did. It plowed right through the beam and broke. Oh dear. Uh, I'm going to look up at the ceiling see how the, the integrity. Um, it's not good. It's starting to starting to collapse a bit. Um, so after, as it lands on uh, Maze and uh, Titus, it goes over and it tries to make a bite at Pearl. 
is a 19 to hit. That hits. That's a problem. All right. As it bites in at Pearl, it, ca it causes uh, 22 points of piercing damage as its large uh, maw kind of clamps down on you. Oh, my word. Uh, Maze and Titus, I need the two of you to give me um, athletic uh, acrobatics checks. See if you dodge out of the way as it comes down. Five. Space. Uh, Fifteen. All right. So we weren't able to do any of our held actions. I'm, I'm getting to that. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I missed that part. I'm sorry. No, yeah, I'm getting to that. So, at okay. Maze, you're able to dodge out of the way. Titus, you're not. And you kind of get knocked to the ground. Uh, now you can do your, uh, you lose your ready to action because you got knocked off your feet. So Pearl and Maze, you two can both uh, do your ready to actions and retaliate. So Maze first, then Pearl. That would be 21 to hit. 21 will hit, roll damage. Can I get sneak attack since Titus was there or no? He's nearby, yeah. Pearl's nearby, so yeah, you get your sneak attack. Okay, all together then it was 19 points of damage. 19 points, not bad. All right, Pearl? Um, Go ahead, Titus. I probably won't be able to get it for this turn because I got landed on by whatever that is. Mm -hmm. But um, with my sentinel feet, anytime uh, a, a target or a creature attacks someone within five feet, well, I guess Pearl's not five feet, I get a melee attack. So I guess that would be for any future attacks. Yeah, for yeah. a future one. Yeah. The, your ally has to be five feet of you. Right. Yeah, she's just outside that range. Yep. Yep. All right, Pearl. Uh, seventeen to hit. Seventeen just hits. Go and roll damage. Nine. 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 All right. Wrong stream. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was able to hit, but I wasn't able to hit very hard, and it's probably because it bit me so stinking hard. I only have nine HP left. Okay. Maze, you're up. I'll take care of it. Nin, you're on deck. All right. I, I will swing my yeah uh, rapier again. A snake attack. Okay. So that'd be a 22. 22 will hit. Roll damage. Uh, eight plus six is what. 15? 15. No, 8 14. plus 6, 14. 14. Okay. Then you're up. Is this, um, is that a column coming down? Is that what that is? Or? Yes, yes it is. Okay, so it's alright. Alright. Um, Nin is going to go to 30 feet. Is somewhere around here. Oops. That was too far. Anyway, 
Um, then he's going to cast Enlarge on Titus and uh, Pearl. It's a 30 foot um, distance, 30 foot range. Okay. I think that should reach him. Yeah. And he's casting uh, 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 Enlarge and twinning the spell so he can do two of them at the same time. So Titus grows and, and Pearl grows. Okay. <laughs> what does that do? I've never Enla done that before. Enlarge, enlarge actually make grows you to one size larger. So if you're a medium creature, you're not considered a large creature. Uh, cool. You want to read the rest one. of that spell for those who aren't unaware, uh, Nin? Yeah, you do 1d4 extra damage each time you hit. And then you can uh, um, uh, carry and move things as if you were a large creature instead of a, a medium sized creature. So you can, I can't remember how much more weight you can haul. Or Does that move. mean I can grapple this thing? <laughs> I don't think you're that big, but that's up to you. You have the same size. <laughs> right, you can always. Try. Hey, I, I've I've done some pretty useful things with grapple and stuff. <laughs> so I just want to say, Maze is freaking out right now. Feet. I'll be the end of my turn, I believe. Oh, and at the end of his turn, he sits down and kind of flings off a bunch of mucus from his forehead. He, uh, he, he collapsed to a knee, I think. Yeah, yeah, the beam that's next to you got collapsed. Let's try to keep this thing away from the beam. Ah, uh, okay. I was just rereading the Sentinel because of a question. That I'll keep that. I'm not going to break the momentum for now but all right so you cast the twin spell titus and pearl are now enlarged any and you any is that complete you turned in yeah there's no bonus action queen. so i'm done yep all right carolee you're up titus you're on deck so pearl got chopped pretty good so i move i leave the lamp there and along with my crossbow so five ten fifteen 20, 25, 30, and I um, grab my staff as I go. I swing my staff once at it. Um, that's going to be a 21 to hit. 21 will hit. Roll damage. Okay, that's going to be ooh, 11 damage. And then I'm going to use Flurry of Blows, so I'll spend a key point. Yeah. And uh, swing at it again, and that's going to be a that's going to be a four, only a fourteen to hit. Fourteen doesn't hit. Okay, and then as my second flurry of blow strike, instead of striking the creature, I turn and I and I slap and I slap Pearl on the side, and she is healed. I use my um, and she is healed for eight hit points. How much? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear it. Eight hit points. Eight. Okay. It's hands of healing. As part of my flurry of blows, I can replace one of my unarmed strikes with the use of the feature, which um, makes me not have to spend an extra key point on that. Cool. And you get healed for eight hit points. That's really cool. And I like how you like smacked me when you did it too. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have time to be subtle. <laughs> oh no, I like it. I like it a lot. I think it's a unique way of doing it. Reminds me of another friend. <laughs> All right, does that complete your turn, Carly? Yeah, that completes my turn. All right, Titus, you're up. Pearl, you're on deck. Okay. I um, am not happy by what this thing has just done to me. Quite offended, actually. Uh, as a friend of nature, I <laughs> I want to take care of it, but at the same time, I want to send it back to the depths from which it came. Uh, so uh, 23 to hit and 17 damage. Ouch. Okay. All right. 
Earl, you're, uh, does that complete your turn, Titus? Yes, it does. Earl, you're up. I'm going to call out real quick. Should I grab it? Yeah, get yes. up, Earl. All right. So I'm going to try and grapple it uh, using my dexterity because I'm a monk. Okay. Uh, that did not work. It's a nine. <laughs> <laughs> no, didn't work. Oh, worth a, worth a try. Turn into petting it gently. Uh, not quite, but she well, goes. An and animal. She, I mean, as as Pearl goes to try and grapple with it, it her hand, it, she just can't find purchase. It's yeah, like it the, looks really smooth. So the, the it's like this this creature is like coated in mud, <laughs> as, as it was burrowing. For some reason, she just can't get a grip on it. It's like Nin. It's slimy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, so My much for fun. keeping the fur clean. Oh, well. Yeah, so much for keeping the fur clean. <laughs> All righty. This brings us to the bur this brings us to the Burlet's turn. Um... Let's see. And it's not having a good day. So it's going to... It's going to attack Titus because it did not like that last hit. So that'll be... A... 21 to hit. That hits. Eighteen points of piercing damage as it bites at you. Okay. <clears throat> Which brings us to Maze. That wasn't very nice. She'll say out loud and then swing her rapier at this thing again. Sneak All right. Back. Come on, Maze. Dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. That'll hit. Eight plus six again, fourteen. How do you want to do it? Ooh. Um, I don't know. This is a large creature compared to you. A very large creature. Yeah, very. The, 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 just the sheer size of its mouth makes you want to makes you think that it could just swallow you real easily. She w does it have a foot? Yes, it or does. Like There's four I, of them. Sweet. She will just go up and take her rapier and smack one of its toes off. <laughs> <laughs> As you bring the rapier down, you sever one of the toes. And in the act of severing the toes, you hear it howl in pain and then collapse. <laughs> Maze does a little dance. And now I need all of you to make dexterity saving throws. <laughs> oh dear. I, I have a feeling about that. So, how much damage does it do to me? <laughs> I'll tell you in just a moment. Remember, you're big. You can hold up some of the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, if you're enlarging and, and you're growing, uh, you're you're growing like that, your head's probably hitting the ceiling. So it's definitely not helping your situation. But Pearl, what'd you get on your deck saving throw? I got a twenty-five. Titus, eight. Maze, <laughs> nineteen. In, eighteen. Carolee, twenty-one. Mm, okay, so it sounds like Titus was the only one who got below a 13. <laughs> so you take five points of bludgeoning damage as the ceiling is starting to collapse around that column and it's starting to kind of trickle out. What do you guys do? You need to run to the entrance. Hurry! We don't want to get stuck down here. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. 
I'll move back over and pick up my. Oops, I meant, I, sorry, I messed up. Steve, I drew. I didn't mean to draw. <laughs> I meant to move. That's I'll fine. move over here and pick pick up the light and my crossbow. Okay. And I, probably that's probably all I, all I can do this turn. Probably get over there and and um, but if I have any more time, I'm gonna kind of look and see if that collapse is gonna be the whole thing or just that area. Um. Go ahead and roll an investigation. Actually, no. Sure. Go ahead and roll a survival check. Okay. Um, that's a five plus four, so sixteen. Um. It only really took out. It, it took out two columns. The first one that uh, as it leapt up toward uh, Pearl and Maze. But it, for where you are, it doesn't look like it's continue. It'll get too much closer because there's a column that is holding it up. All the same, it's probably not going to be a safe place to be for a little bit. Uh, Nin, what about you? What do you? What do you? What are you doing as you start to see the ceiling collapse? I'm headed back towards the entrance. I'm gonna go. I'm going to go towards this entrance as far as I can get. All right. So if you use your dash, you'll get what, 60 feet? Well, I'm not going to dash completely. I'm going to hang around the entrance, I think. Okay. Well, I'll just go towards the entrance, I guess. All right. Maze? Um, well, Pearl said run towards the entrance i'm on my bring my flying so i'll just kind of follow men up that way okay Titus. um so i'm not like holding up the ceiling or anything right i can you just... haven't told me you were okay is the is the ceiling is it just crumbling around where that center column was that it's come cumbering around the that that column and the column further down that was knocked over when the uh, yeah when the creature first leapt at Pearl and Maze. Okay. So only so as you look through, there are um, four four columns. The two center ones have been knocked out. The other two are kind of losing the stability battle mm -hmm. and keeping it up. All right. So. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to step over to this other to the other column that's left remaining closer to where the party is. Okay. And because I'm large, uh, I'm going to uh, try to support the the load, c help carry the load next to the column so that it could last a little longer and get uh, Pearl out of the area. Okay. Um... Go ahead and give me a strength check. All right, dice, don't fail me now. Fifteen. Oh, wait. Fifteen's good. You're able to get oh, okay. in there, and yeah. you're kind of you're kind of doing the whole the whole atlas thing and holding mm -hmm. it and keeping it from col from collapsing down. Pearl. I'm gonna head towards the entrance. Okay. And I've got 50 movement, so I didn't actually measure it out. But you move toward the yeah. you move toward the entrance over I'm the creature, and then the after a and few it, after ow, a few tense moments with Titus holding up the uh, the the ceiling, you see further down the things have collapsed a bit, but the 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 last beam is still kind of there. Um, and then it, after a little while, things seem to settle a bit. And then uh, where Titus can feel, he can release the ceiling without it caving in on him. Most he gets is a few bits of gravel that fall onto his hair, onto, onto, onto his head. And then uh, things seem fairly stable. The creature is buried in, partially buried in some of the rubble. All right, so it's all right. But it, it, it Probably not best to hang out in the hang out here too much longer, but it, it's everything seems safe for the moment. Hmm. So we can we can any way of, um, of supporting or stabilizing the columns that were hit 
Like using our two big brutes? <laughs> he, he, uh, they were, when the creature blew through them, they actually, he actually kind of snapped them in half. Oh, okay. So you would need new columns. You, would, you would need to put new columns up there. Or maybe a boulder underneath them? Or are they just totally gone? Either they're partial and there's no rocks big enough to stain uh, in their place. Okay. Early, what were you going to ask? I was gonna ask? We didn't see where the... I mean, ascertain where it came from to see... It's pro it probably took the prisoners for food and ate them, I'm guessing, or the miners, but... I, I guess I was just going to think of where it kind of came from if we could kind of figure out where that is and go back that way. I saw, I saw a tunnel just down the way. Where yes. I went to look. Is it collapsed by now, Steve? I mean, with all the other stuff falling in on it. Say that again. Is the tunnel collapsed um, that Nen saw? Do you mean exit to this room? No, it's it's it, it's fairly stable. It's a small. It's just big enough for the creature okay. as it dived into it. Uh, okay. Roll a nature check for me. Okay. <laughs> That's not my specialty. Oh, but uh, fourteen plus what? Fifteen. Fifteen. Um, the cre the, the, this creature is known to be kind of in the under, in, 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 live underground and in the underdark and every so often they'll come up to the surface they're carnivorous um, they're not uh, and so it's kind of an ambush predator so it's probably eating the miners we're guessing here well, probably and, and a good bet I, I would even say to Carly uh we could go up, tell them we killed it, have them support it, and if they want us to look for the miners, then we can look for them after that. But let's secure this place first so we don't get trapped. Um, yeah, can we drag the, the uh, creature out of the way and cut off like a horn or something to prove we, we killed it? Well, uh, Maze did cut off the toe. Oh, yeah. Did Maze pick up the toe after she cut it off? Can May say yes? <laughs> <laughs> Maze can certainly can certainly say that. Yeah, Maze has got a land okay. shark toe. And as, <laughs> as you're as you're holding it, this thing is is like the as big as your hand. I mean, it, this is this is a massive toe. Well, like a long kind of like like really kind of broad and rough uh, nail on it. Uh, definitely looks good for digging, but yeah, you do you do have the toe there. I've got the toe. It's proof. Can we go now? Yeah. I head out of the room. Yeah. Do I um? Do I know that Nin cast the enlarge thing? Uh. He kind of got off the ground. Because you haven't seen Carolee cast a whole lot of spells. Carolee is dressed in a similar, roughly similar, partially <laughs> similar uh, 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 attire uh, that like Pearl does. Only Pearl's got the kimono, but when Pearl, but uh, but Pearl also has a similar type of garb that is more of a martial fighter. And you already know, based on your experience with Nin thus far, random magic things seem to happen around him. But it, it so it's probably him who did it. Yeah. So, uh, understanding that, or thinking I understand that, uh, I'll ask Nin. Uh, so, when when do I go back to my normal size? Oh, yeah. Um, um, I don't know. Um, <laughs> um, I just kind of reached. I, I had gotten a little bit of iron powder from the from the mine, the tracks, and I, I just threw it in the air, and then you enlarged. I don't know, quite know what happened. Um, so how, 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 do I, how, how do I get out of this mine? Because... That's not exactly made for people my size. Um, big. Uh, 
crawl? Yeah, it's crawl. It's a tight crawl. fit. It's a really tight fit. You kind of have to be partially hunched over a little bit in some areas. The toughest part will be getting through that little area that you came, that you got in, but you kind of push your way through and knock some loose boulders and whatnot about. Pearl knocked some, you knocked a few more. You so the two so of bad. you are kind of in this hunched thing. You, it's a little more uncomfortable because of your armor mm -hmm. and whatnot that you're wearing. <laughs> Pearl seems to be just kind of I mean, at a couple of points, you almost see her get on all it's fours and like kind a cat of does. bounce about. Oh, yeah, totally. How long does the spell Maybe last you again? Tuck your gun in. I think it's like a minute. <laughs> so, yeah, as you as you got as go through, eventually you do shrink down to your normal size. Aw, I like being tall. Titus, you want to like, I, I, I did a healing hands on you for seven hit points, so. Oh, okay, good. I wasn't sure. Did, they, did anybody else get hurt in the combat? I I think it was just Titus and I. Okay. I'm going to, I stop, if we have a second after we get out of this cave, I'll stop and pop my healer's kit and I'll do a healing on both of them with that, which does, um, so you get, oh, Pearl, that, that was good. Uh, you get six, so you get 10 plus your character level, so 14. Thank you. And Titus, you get three less than that, so you get uh, 11. Thank you. Hey, I'm, I'm Max now. Thank you. Is anybody else hurt? I think that was it. I think that's it. Okay. Yeah, no, I just got some dust stuck to my forehead. I wipe it off. <laughs> I wipe oh, it off. Oh, and, and, and after we get out of the cave, and so she'll start grooming herself like a cat does, you know, trying to get as much of that mud off as she can so it doesn't mat. Ah. Uh, as, as you guys come back up to the main entrance, the uh, orc uh, foreman, uh, so to speak, is you guys come back. Find anything? You mean yeah. you didn't hear oh, that? A dirt shark. <laughs> uh, there was a uh, some rumbling that uh, we've heard, and yeah, I'm kind of surprised to see it came back. But what'd you find? Uh, I'll hold out the toe. Yeah. He looks at it and he's like, "What happened? We, we killed a dirt shark." This is what was eating. We're pretty sure this is what was eating your, um, your workers. Oh, we didn't find any scat. Yeah, it was pretty large, and it was a shark predator. Um, I describe it as best I can with that role I had made earlier with the college major. I describe it as best I can, and uh, say, and it was. Yeah, I think it was a predator, and it attacked them. And, yeah, As you describe it, yeah, at, at some point the orc uh, sits there and conf like a, a burlet and kind of confirms that the creature is called a burlet. And uh, it, it's it's un it, it's not very common to see them, but they're, they've, every so often one would travel close to the surface, but they're typically an underdark. He, he, he would be, as, as, as an orc, he would be somewhat aware of them. But um, anything. so it's like that. Is that all you found? Unfortunately, yes. Oh, and 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 it broke two of the the pretty scratchy posts in the room. So uh, the ceiling is starting to crumble. So you so we might need to get some more scratching posts to support it again. He sits there and is like, "Well, that's much appreciated." What do you say? Uh, I mean. Yeah, thank you. What do you say you come up to our child, our, our dining area and uh, have dinner with us and, and take a rest here before uh, heading back over to town? Oh, that sounds very nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I always like to try uh, new food. And maybe maybe you they... guys can help us uh, cheer up that cave uh, tomorrow after you've rested up. Yeah, maybe. Do we know if they are traveled in singularly or in... They're typically solitary creatures. It, it's very rare. It, I mean, it's it's very rare to find a pair, but they're typically very solitary creatures. I wonder if we can attach something to them and use it to mine. But, oh, never mind. That's just crazy. Oh, 
Oh, and I got to be nice and tall. It was really cool. That might help with the, with, the, with the holding up the ceiling until you guys can put the beans in. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe uh, however I got tall. Did you like that? We can, maybe we can do that again. Cool, huh? <laughs> that was cool, Pearl, wasn't it? Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, I'm sure I can do it again just right. I, I, you know, I got it in my head this time, I'm sure. Uh, Titus like, takes five steps back. <laughs> Let's wait till we're actually in the place where we need to be big again, and then you can try it again. It's okay. I'm feeling tired anyway. I don't really remember what I did anyhow, so... Um, uh, yeah, you might want to think about trying to remember what you did. Maybe you could write it down. Um, I don't remember how to write. I think uh, I... That, that could be a problem. Well, it, it one, is. But... this is uh, this is where we'll uh, end for this for tonight <laughs> for this week. Uh, now that you uh, you guys enjoy a meal, uh, get a long rest in, gotta relax a little bit, and then uh, the following day help shore up, help shore up the mind and uh, maybe spend some time teaching Nin how to write letters. Mm. Uh, I know this won't do anything in character, but I actually I actually prefer the night is over. I, I cast Lesser Restoration on on Nin, uh, and I try to, it says you can either, you know, disease or condition, and I know that he doesn't really have a condition, but I, <laughs> but I, but I try anyway. You, you, you make the attempt, and, but it doesn't seem like anything about him has really changed. Yeah. So, what it, so you can just mark that off on your yeah. list of potential troubleshooting to figure out. <laughs> What crazy circumstances got Nin to where he's at? I think some of the mucus dried up. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Just for now. But uh, Thanks, with Tyson. that, uh, thank you everyone in the chat for watching and hanging out with us. Uh, thank you for all the bits and the cheers and all those great things, all of those subs. Um, Bulgraza, thanks for the Frank. Thanks for the sub. Um, Ben K, Dish Pickle, thank you for the bits. Glock, thank you for the resub for five month sub. Saladin, thank you for the seven month sub. You guys are awesome and amazing. Really appreciate that. Um, again, thank you for Sirenscape for the background music and soundboards that we heard tonight. Uh, also, a shout out for Stream Beats, uh, DRM free music that you can use for your videos and uh, streams. And hopefully uh, we will see what happens next Saturday with Challenge Accepted and see what kind of traveling they do and where they want to go from there. Um, want to remind everyone again, if you, if, if you want to support the studio, another way you can do that is by joining our Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash scuba studio. You can do it for as little as a dollar or as much or more. Uh, but those kind of things help really kind of keep the lights on, keep us uh pushing the bar forward in our development we are running we are going to do a giveaway on patreon the first 100 when we get to 100 patrons i have a puzzle box from mithril armory that i will be giving away to one of the, one of our patrons um so if you can jump into that if not uh, there's also the link for one-time donation and of course continuing to do the subs and the bits here on twitch it's much appreciated tomorrow morning 12 p.m eastern uh uh, over on our YouTube channel, I'll be doing a stream for Sunday with Scoob, and I have a meaning I'm going to paint. And then, of course, Tuesday is Scuba and the Rye, and then we're back to playing D&D again next Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, I uh, wish everyone a great evening, a great week, and we will and uh, I thank you to the cast for spending their Saturday night with me. I appreciate that. You guys are feeling good with uh, getting back into it? Oh, I had a blast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was so much fun. Okay, I have a feeling that, uh, yeah. I won't be the only one causing trouble this time. <laughs> no, no. I believe somebody commented in the chat. There's, they don't feel the need to cast to to summon wild magic because Nin is a walking catastrophe waiting to happen or something. I may be paraphrasing. I like it.
Have a great night.